And Bible school, June 5th through the 9th? Yes. Is that good? Um, I went Thursday night and I picked up a package for each class, so if you were not able to go, I do have one. And then if you need it, um, I still am short at least one teacher and an activities person. Um, and we are going to have a kickoff that Sunday, um, so if somebody would like to be do our meal on Sunday prior to our kickoff. Everybody remember that, and if you can help, by all means, join up and sign up and let her know. So, uh, Donnie's still in on vacation, so we're proud to have Brother Clark Watson here with us today. Uh, so be, be much in prayer for him and the service. Amen. Uh, anybody got anything else? If not, stand to your feet, turn to page 243, and we'll take up our morning offering.
Lady Floyd, how about Lady Floyd?
singing. We were here this morning. Thank you, Lord. Uh, we love you, Pastor Donnie, and uh, he called and asked us to come here this morning. So I ask you to be much in prayer for us this morning. I hope his family's having a really good time, and I know they are this morning. Last week, me and Carolyn, we celebrated our 50th anniversary. So she's been blessed for 50 years. <laughs> I thought about uh, when Mary and Carolyn got married and a few years back, I was listening to TV, and I couldn't hear good, and I actually got out of the Marine Corps, and uh, I'd say, what do they say? And she'd tell me. Now and then, I can hear as good or better than she can. So I thought about a story I read about 50-year marriage. This man had been married to this woman 50 years, and Boy, this just hit me and Carolyn on the head. I said, he told us, looked over to his wife, and she's sitting there, and he said, after 50 years, I have found you tried and true. She said, what? He said, after 50 years, I have found you tried and true. She said, well, after 50 years, I'm tardy you too. <laughs> <laughs> so I hit me and Carolyn right on the head there. So it's good to have a good life in church, and thank the Lord for that this morning. Uh, before we go any further, Jackie, would you lead us in prayer? Most kind of gracious Heavenly Father. Yes, Lord, Jesus. We ask now that you be with Brother Clark. He yes. brings the word, dear Heavenly Father, that you would have us to hear. Yes. And let us take those words, dear Heavenly Father, and apply them to our everyday yes. life. Yes. We ask, Lord, now that you be with the sick, be with those that's in the hospitals, and especially, dear Heavenly Father, be with those that uh, lost loved ones, dear Lord. Give them the peace and and comfort, Lord, that only comes from you. Jesus. And all this we ask in our great and holy name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jackie. Let's get on with prayer. This morning, take the sixth chapter of Book of Ephesians. Be reading some scriptures in it, and I'll be reading some in the second Timothy, in the second chapter of Timothy. Uh, first three or four verses there, and then we'll start in the tenth verse of the sixth chapter of Ephesians this morning. It's talking about really what on our heart is being a, a good soldier in the power of God. The Bible tells us when we're saved, we're teaches us when we're saved, uh, the Spirit of God dwells in us, uh, instantly dwells in upon us when we're saved. The Bible tells us, Paul said in one place, Know ye not that you're the temple of God, and the Spirit of God dwells in you. It says another place, If you not have not the Spirit of Christ, you're none of His. Own. So we know when we get saved, the Holy Spirit indwells us the instant we receive Jesus as our Savior. And the reason I'm going to say that this morning is about this. I'm going to talk about the power of the Spirit. The Spirit this morning, how we can allow it to lead our lives, or we can say no to the Holy Spirit and not follow the, the Spirit. But I want to talk about uh, how the Spirit helps us. Paul, uh, Paul, uh, Paul attempts him about being a good soldier. I'll read that in just a minute. In the first, second chapter of Timothy. Now, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou mayest hear of them among many witnesses, the same commit thou to be faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Now, therefore, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth and entangles himself with the affairs of this life, but he that may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. I thought about when I was in the Marine Corps, come back to my mind and how hard we train and what would endure to be a good soldier? I would have a mission to accomplish, and our mission was to have, we might have victory. The army might have, the, the Marine Corps was in, would have victory. But I serve Jesus Christ today. Every one of us has been born into the family of God as a soldier for the Lord Jesus Christ today. Every, every one of us has the a blood applied to our hearts this morning. I do not, I serve Christ. Not to seek a victory, but I serve Christ because I already have victory in the blood this morning. We have victory in Jesus today. We're to be a good soldier and we're not war against the things that 
come and the sin that will easily beset us will not to let it entangle us for being a good soldier. But I want to talk about the power. Find my brother and be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against ru rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual weakness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand in the evil day and having done all to stand. That's another good thought right there. Having done all to stand. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breath pride righteous and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer, supplications in the Spirit, watching there unto with all perseverance and supplications for all the Spirit. We go back to 10th verse. It says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. They said on another place, they be strong in the grace of God. The grace, the unmerited favor that God sent Jesus on the cross to die for our sins today. Let's be standing strong in that. We're saved by grace through faith. And, not a, and it goes on next word, not a word lest any man should boast. We're, we're, we're saved by grace. We live by grace. We're, we worship through Jesus Christ by grace. But finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his mind. Stand in the power. We have the power. Yesterday, I was walking through my pasture there, not walking, but I was driving through the pasture, and I hear a big tree fell. It's a big old, a big old uh, pine tree that fell down, and it broke several trees there. Well, first thing I want to go look at this time of the year was that wild cherry there. Because I have wild cherry trees in my pasture, and we know when the, when the, the leaves on that wild cherry begin to wilt, and cattle partake of that, it's cyanide poison. It'll kill them just in a few hours, just an hour, so it'll kill them. So the first thing I done is went down there and see if there was one. Yes, there was one down there, a wild cherry tree. He had knocked it plumb over there, that pine head. What I did then, I went straight to the house and I got my chainsaw and I brought it back down and going to cut that tree up and haul the leaves away. I'm telling you that this morning because that was the power that I think today the church, we're not using the power that we're accessible to through the blood of the Lamb today. Listen today, what if I'd have went down there, listen now, what if I'd have went down there and tried to take my hand and chop the tree in two? I could beat my hand to death on my own and I would never made a dent in that tree. I had the power, access of the power of the chainsaw. Listen today, we cannot live a Christian life on our own. We cannot battle the man the one called Satan on our own. We cannot do that today. But through the power that's invested in us through the Lord Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit, we can battle and we can beat and we can defeat temptations in our life today. In the, in the book tells us he made a way. Jesus has made a way that we don't have to fall into temptations of this world. Now, we do have an enemy. And a good soldier, we're going to have an enemy. Now, our enemy right here talking about down here is that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Our enemy is not one another. We live in a society today where wars are going on. We live in a society where there's a culture war going on. A culture war is, if you don't believe what God believes, then I have nothing to talk against you. And then we're going through what we call sometimes a moral law. Don't you think we're going through a moral war today in the nation that we live in? A moral law. But what's more than the biggest law war we're going to, it's a spiritual war. We have a spiritual war going against us all the time. And his name is Satan this morning. Could be the flesh. Could be the world. But we have a spiritual battle going on now. But Billy Graham said one time, I read him with his books. He said, if you could look into the world today and see what was going on in the spiritual realm, all these world, other wars, wars were just like popcorn, popcorn, considered to the spiritual war that we're going today. Each and every one of us is battling the one called Satan each and every day. His, the Bible tells us he is a created being. He is real today. I don't give too much credit to him, but he's a real today. A lot of people do not, in this world do not believe that he existed, but he does. Exist. If you read Ezekiel 28, I believe that pertains to him a lot. And he said he is created. We know that God, what did Jesus do? 
all things were created by him and consist him. So he was a created being. People, you know, used to see the cartoons where you see Satan on one shoulder and you lose my and, a, and a good, an angel on the other shoulder trying to persuade someone what to do. Listen today, look like an equal power. Listen, he created. He does not have the power that the Lord Jesus Christ today. We give him too much credit. We cannot defeat him alone, but through Christ, we can do all things which threaten us today. Christ Jesus, we have the will. We have the power to build it if we use it. If we use it to defeat this, this one called Satan today. We know he, he is created. He comes, uh, the Bible says he comes as an angel of light sometimes. The Bible tells us he, he, he just, uh, he become, he's a liar. He's a murderer. From the beginning, he's 100% evil. There's absolutely nothing good about Satan this morning. And I talked about that power, how, how it can, how it, we need to use that power. Now, yet other day, I, I just thought about the other day, I got an electric fence put around one part of my pasture there, a circle. I got pastures on all around it. And what would happen before I'd done this, I got so several years now, 17, 18 years, I didn't have that. And what my bulls would do, they would get in that pasture and I have them separated. But you just tear that fence down and just go to the other pasture. And I wondered this morning, you know, why would they, why they just want to go? They had plenty of grass in both pastures. I thought about what, what a bull might have thought of using my Ned. He might have thought, well, well, look over yonder in that other pasture. Boy, the grass is greener over there, ain't it? Oh, look over there. He got more cows than I got over there. Look, he got more prettier cows than I got. That might be something interesting over there. Here's what that boy might have thought. He might have thought different things. But this is what he really thought. He, they would get there and they would fight and tie the fence down. What he really had on his mind was he wanted to be the king of the hill. He wanted to be all about himself. He wanted to be, let him know, I'm the man. I'm the ruler at this place here. Listen today. That was simply nothing but pride. The Bible says that six things I hate, even seven's abomination. And what's the first thing that God hates is a proud look. Pride, that comes even before murder does, even before lies. That comes before the first thing. You know what? You know what the one thing that pride will never say? Pride will never say, I'm sorry. I messed up. I made a mistake. Pride will never say those words. Listen, it won't be pride. Pride is the root of all evil. Listen here. He want to be, what do we think of? When, when our prayer life is, is our prayer life both about ourselves and mine? I get myself doing that sometimes. I say, Lord, I know they're mine. I need to pray for them, and I do pray for them. But do I think about my neighbor? When people get up in a church sometimes, and they ask for, I don't know why I was coming, but they come up and they ask for a prayer request sometimes. Them people, when they ask for a prayer request, they trust in every Christian in this house to pray for them, and they respect you, they trust you. There's only a reason they're going to get up and ask for prayer. Ask for prayer. Pray. And I thought about it. I put that fence around there. That old electric fence keeps them all bulls in, in their space. Boy, when I'm, when I'm touching, he jumped about 10 foot in the air, and he, he ain't been up there again. And I thought about it the other day. I don't worry, I check that fence. I got a little, a little thing I check that fence with, that electric fence with ever so often. I'll go by and check it. And, if it, and I went by this day, and I checked it, and there was no power to it. Now, there wasn't nothing in the world to stop them bulls from going into the, uh, the pasture now because there wasn't no power to that electricity no more. And I went around and I checked that fence. I walked plumb around it, 16 acres of fence. I walked plumb around it, around it. I couldn't find nothing stopping that from working, from the power going through. I called a man and put up, and I had a little tester. He said, well, Clark, if you're going to mash that little tester, a button on that little tester to put an arrow, arrow would be pointing you to where, that, uh, uh, where, where it's disconnected or where the, the shortage is. So I done that. I punched that, and then sure enough, it showed me, and I went in then. I went walking again, but I knew which way to go this time. And I got close to that, and I found that disconnection. I found out where another war was shortening that war out. One disconnect was shortening it out, and there I fixed, I fixed it. And I had power again. I thought about, oh, God, as I was walking around there. 
Listen here today. They think today we're shortage. I, you know, I want to intimacy with God. I want to be right close to him. I want to hear him. I want to feel the power. I want to feel the fellowship of the Lord Jesus Christ. But sometimes I don't, you know, I ask why. Where is the shortage in my life? What is shorting me out today of not feeling the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ? What is shorting me out when temptation comes? I don't have the power to say no. What is shorting me out there? I don't know. The shortage. What sin but most easy to beset me? Where's the shortage at? You know where you find the shortage at? I went by that first fence on my own. I didn't find nothing. But when I got down and used the instruments that God had given me, I found the shortage then. Listen, the word of God, if you listen today, if you got a shortage and you ain't felt the presence and the power of God in your life in a long time, you can come to the altar this morning, and I promise you, you will find the shortage right there. Shortage. Is there a shortage in your life? Is there something, something that's nagging and keeping you away from Jesus? A lot of times, why? Oh, man. Why do we sometimes we'll ask God forgiveness and He's faithful and just to forgive us and clean us of all unrighteousness, the Bible says. And that's what happens then. Sometimes we fall right back in again. We do the same thing over and over. One time I went to talk to this guy for another fella. He was been a, he had he dealing with drugs. This person was on drugs. I went to ask him. I said, "Well, now he told me he had quit. He wasn't going to do it no more." He said, "No, he ain't quit, Pa." I said, "Why ain't he quit?" He said, "He had." He said, "He doesn't hate the drug. If we don't get to the point where we hate the sin, we'll keep falling back into that trap over and over again. We get to the point in our life, and the closer we get to Jesus, the more little, the more humble." There was a man one time, a centurion. The Bible tells us that he had a, a slave that was dear unto him. He turned sick with palsy. He sent the man after Jesus to come, and Jesus said, yeah, he would come over there. So he wanted him to come to his house and heal his servant. He didn't feel worried about going to see him. But as closer to Jesus got to his house, he sent word not to even come under his roof because he wasn't even worthy to come under his roof. The closer Jesus got to him, he saw how small he was and how great Jesus was. And that's the day if we, when we get where we have that relationship, that close relationship with Jesus, we will see how little we are, how great he is in our life. Why don't we, we want to follow him? He died on a rugged cross. For each and every one of us. He loves us that much. He died for us. Jesus. But listen here. That electric fence keeps them cattle bulls in their boundary now. And that's what this word of God will do. That's what prayer will do. It will keep us in our boundaries. That we might worship him in his spirit and in truth. The Lord Jesus Christ. So we're right not against that old Satan. The old Satan. The devil. Adversary, we don't have to wrestle against him. He is defeated, but we've got to say no to the temptation, and we have the power to do so. Wherefore, take upon you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and have done all to stand. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Those wiles will be the strategies of the devil. His methods haven't changed. It's the same as it was in the day of Adam and Eve when he comes to Eve. You know, you know the story how it was in the middle of the garden there's two trees, the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And the Lord told them not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that they should die. We know the story goes on and how Satan tempted Eve. She had a dialogue with him. She should have never talked with him. And she had a dialogue with him. And she finally, he told her she wanted to be like God, that she could take her the fruit. God didn't really mean what he said. Well, you know, we don't go well, out and we know how to cast out of the garden, but physically they didn't die at that time. But death was brought upon them. But let me tell you what died. Their innocence died. When they had created, they created in the image of God. They had a perfect mind, perfect body, perfect will, perfect environment. All things were perfect. But when they took, took, took that fruit, the intimacy with God died. The relationship with God died. The relationship with one another died. They did lose lots of things in, when they took of that fruit. 
So his methods had to change. It didn't change with David. When he said, Bathsheba, watch your head, what a beautiful woman. That didn't change. So his methods had not changed. It's still going on today. But see, you may be able to stand an evil day and have done all to stand. Let's go back to that fence just a minute. I'm talking about that fence. I got electric fence. Now, it's held up by posts. Some of them are wood and some of them are metal. Now, some of them metal posts, when they get a little age on them and wind comes and different things come, something hits them, they'll bend. They don't give up. They, they'll bend a little. Compromise just a little. They'll bend. Them wood posts are, what happens to them a lot of times, the elements of the earth. They'll rot down at the bottom and they'll break. They stand straight, but they'll break. But now you can't tell it in my fence. You can't tell which one broke what because the fence is nailed to the other post and that other post is helping one another, helping them stand up. Let's hear Them fences are holding up the, the wire. But let's hear the church today to hold each other up and hold up the blood-stained banner of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what we could do. Talk about a while ago in, in Timothy. I don't want to go back this way. Talk about Timothy. About he was but to tell the gospel to other people. I know it's been charged some preacher, but it's for everyone. A lot of people will say, I really don't know what to say. I pray, Paul prayed, that he said, for me that others may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. That should be all our prayers, that we make known the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. They're going to, if, if the people to hear today, just these younger people, if you don't tell someone about Jesus, What's going to happen one day? They're going to be the lost in a generation because they don't know about Jesus. We need to be talking about Jesus. You say, well, Clark, I don't know what to say. Let me tell you what, uh, uh, what Jesus told the legion one time. He actually cast out all them demons out of him. And he, and he told him when he wanted to go with Jesus, said, Jesus said no. And this is what Jesus told him to say. This is, if we don't know the scriptures and we don't know what to say, this is what we can say. He said, go to your friends. Listen, you people, go to your friends and tell them all the great, not good, but all the great things Jesus has done in your God, has done in your life and had compassion on you. We've all, everyone's been saved. We've got a story to tell other people about. The Lord Jesus Christ is more than But stand, having done all we can stand. I thought about a man that stood. And one, Moses. You know, about, it says in Hebrews, the 24th, 11th chapter, 24th birth, by faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. She was rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season. Esteeming the reproach of Christ, greater riches than the treasure in Egypt, for he had respect on the recompense of the reward. Moses. We know that Mo you think, well, Moses? Fair to me, Pharaoh's daughter, uh, son. You know, I didn't see that this morning, you know, when Pharaoh... When Moses' mother put him on that little ark and put him out there, and Pharaoh's daughter came by and got her maids to go out there and get him, saw him, she had compassion on him. And even though his, Moses' sister went up and told him, and Visa got uh, Moses' real mother to raise him and got paid for it. But then he gave her back to Pharaoh's daughters. Moses could have said, listen now, Moses could have said, well, she raised me. I, she, I've got, I'm, 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 part of the Egyptian family. I'm part of Pharaoh. He, I, the world would say, you need to stick to that, son. You have all the pleasures, all the power, all the fame. You need to stick to that. But Moses said, no. I'd rather, I'd rather suffer the affliction of the people of God and enjoy the pleasure of the sin forever. He had it all. He could have everything. But you know, I thought about this morning about the power. He, could, he thought about all people in the world thought he had all power. He should have never left that. Never should have made that decision. But I tell you what, through God, using that man, let's go back to power, through God using that man, he was able, through God now, to part the Red Sea. Now that's power. That's power. Doing what God would have you do is power, not what the world will think. This morning, if you hadn't been saved by the grace of God, come get a song. If you hadn't been saved by the grace of God, and this morning you, you feel him tugging at your heart this morning. Today is the day of salvation. Harden not your heart. Today is the day, not tomorrow, not this afternoon. Today is the day. Right now is a time of salvation. I'd ask you to come this morning and bow down. We know it's his will that not any should perish. We know it's God's will that you be saved today.
He don't want to see anybody perish and go to that place called hell. He, did, he don't. He came to send his only begotten son, Jesus, to die for us this morning. If there may, may be a shortage in your connection with the Spirit to the Lord Jesus Christ, you just ain't felt the closeness. You just ain't felt the power. You ain't felt the warmth that you had liked to feel this morning. I ask you to come and ask him to reconnect you. Get that short, shortage out of the way. Put back the power of the love and for you. We do have power. The Bible, we love one another. Let's hear this morning. Do you have, do you, can you feel the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit that lives and dwells within you this morning? I hope you can. If you can't, one time I was in a revival and I was sitting at the back. My mama, she dead and gone now. But mama said, well, she ain't gone. She's going to heaven. But mama said, she, I was back there and I, I fight my preacher calling. I was cold as a tater. I was just sitting back there looking up there. Wish I had my mind might have been somewhere else. She come back by me. She said, son, you need to get up to the front if you want to feel the heat. Get up there where the heater is. Listen, you may need to move this morning. You may need to do something this morning. You may need to tell someone you love them this morning. Where it might be, would you follow the Spirit? If, if we don't start right now, this instant, follow the Spirit, then our power. Would you, uh, see what happens? The, the Spirit will never lead us wrong. The Spirit will always lead us in the right direction. Always will. But we can say no. We can quench the Spirit. We can say no to it and not have, let it have its free way in our life. The Bible says if we walk in the Spirit, we will not fulfill the lust thereof. We walk in the Spirit. We talk in the Spirit. Listen this morning. Would you just stand and sing this morning? Do what the Lord have you do this morning. Would you do that? Would you follow the leadership of the power of the Lord Jesus Christ this morning? Would you do that? What would hinder you from doing that morning? If you need to come pray about anything, and he may come just praise him, whatever you need to do, would you follow the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ? Stand and sing. Stand and sing. Appreciate your pastor more. <laughs> so I, mission accomplished. <laughs> Anybody got anything before we go? Uh, Ro- we'll, we'll be taking up the collection. Don't forget that. Yes. Okay. High tower. Roger, how about this, Mister? Our Lord, Master God, we thank you, Lord, for this day. Lord, we thank you for all the blessings of life. God, we thank you for your mercy and your grace. Yes. God, we thank you, Lord, for Clark. Lord, a man that we know 
for a long time, Lord, how we love him and his family and what they mean to us. But God, Lord, we pray for those, Lord, that's out in the world, God, Lord, that don't know you. Yes, we Lord, that's singing. Yes, you. God, there's so many, Lord, that's going through this world, yes. Lord, that just has no desire whatsoever, yes. God, for you. But Lord, I know there'll be a time come, Lord, where a time will stand no more. Yes. And God, that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall That's confess right, right. that you are Lord. Yes. God, we pray for him, Lord. We pray for this church, Lord, yes, the church that we love dearly. Yes. God, we just ask you, Father, Lord, that you'll just be with everyone. And God, be with those that shut in. And yes. God, Lord, most of all, Lord, we pray, God, for the ones that have lost loved ones, Lord. Yes. Bill Woods family, yes. God, be with them, Lord. And God, most of all, Lord, we pray for the lost. God, we pray, Lord, that you be with Donnie and his family, Lord. Right. Let them get back safely. That's right. God, thank you for everything that you have done, everything that you're going to do. And, Lord, we'll lift you up above everything else, and we'll give you the praise and honor and the glory for it all. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.